Greetings and salutations, friends, and uh, welcome back to more Warhammer Fantasy lore. Today, we are going to talk about Alaric the Mad Runesmith's finest creations. At least on the side of the angels. And the highest badges of nobility in the Empire. Second only in authority and power to the mighty Gal Maraz, the Rune Fangs. But before we proceed with the lore, a quick word from a returning sponsor, NordVPN. And this month we've got an extra special deal for you all. The two-year plan plus one month free for a tremendous 73% discount. All you need to do is go down into the description below and click the link and it will automatically apply the arch code, meaning you'll only pay $79 to be protected for two years. I will lead with the deal because frankly, I imagine pretty much all of you at this point see the value in getting a good VPN service provider. Keeping track of your data and who makes use of it is more important than ever. Digital crimes is on the rise, identity theft is a bigger problem than ever before, and of course, if you have that unfortunate habit of arguing for freedom of speech on the internet, uh, maybe you want to test out the new double VPN feature, which adds on an extra layer of encryption to everything you do on the internet. And luckily, good online security and privacy does not have to be difficult. NordVPN has a very simple and intuitive user interface where even the powerful double VPN option can be accessed with the simple press of a button. You can then move on to select your preferred location from tons of options scattered all across the globe. Finally feeling safe and secure, you can get back to doing what you were doing, trolling the internet for entertainment. Safe in the knowledge that no matter what kind of local blockers might be in place, you can simply swap your digital location to get access to anything and everything. So, if you're interested in the deal, do go to nordvpn.com slash arch and grab the two-year plan plus one month free for 73% off. And now, back to the Empire. Or more correctly, the Empire's deep and distant past. As the rune fangs were of course not forged by mere human hands. Magical weapons of tremendous power and age, they are almost, in fact, as old as the Empire itself. A mere hundred odd years its junior and the wondrous weapons have continued to serve ably in the hands of hundreds of electric counts over the course of 2,400 years plus. Yet despite their hundreds of lifetimes of service, they remain as razor sharp and strong as the day they were forged and passed on to the very first electric counts. Having existed for longer than our own modern day calendar, that feat of longevity alone would rank them amongst the greatest of all arms ever forged in the Warhammer world. But of course it does not end there. The blade of the first rune fang was described as shining like captured moonlight, and that its edge was keen enough to slice the veil between worlds. Luckily for all involved, that last bit was at least a slight touch of exaggeration. As I imagine swinging the sword and carving open a hole to hell in reality would be a rather unlooked for side effect. But whilst unable to cut through dimensions, the rune fangs are easily able to slice through even dwarven grumril plate and dragon scales as well. Before such a keen edge, any mundane armor is worse than useless, as not only will it be weighing you down, it'll offer precisely dick in the way of protection against the sword. A fact most thoroughly proven by Sigmar's childhood friend Pendragon as he fought against invading Chaos hordes at the city of Middenheim. 
taking personal command of the defences, Pendragon, with his newly forged rune fang, leg biter in hand, led the defences of the city. Assailed as it was, not only by the numberless hordes of chaos worshippers, but also by monstrous entities and demon creatures from beyond the veil, it would take a miracle for Medenheim to hold. And yet, hold it did. Securing, and yet, hold it did. Securing, yet again, the Empire's continued existence in those early dangerous days of its glorious history, and proving that the dwarf runesmith's word was as good as his promises. Unfortunately, the valiant hero Pendragon fell during the conflict, and his sword legbiter was handed down to Mirissa, his successor, and to Mirissa's successors again and again and again through the history of Middenland. The rune fang's quality then is beyond any question, but why did the dwarves give such precious items to the humans in the first place? Twelve of them, no less. A tremendously generous gift given to what was at the time a bunch of barely organized hairless savage apes. Well, it was almost all due to the actions of one particularly noteworthy hairless monkey by the name of Sigmar. Now, many of you already know, undoubtedly, the tale of how Sigmar Heldenhammer saved the High King of the Dwarves, Kurgan Ironbeard, um, from a group of marauding greenskins that had somehow managed to capture the Dwarven High King. In a show of gratitude, he gifted Sigmar, at the time nothing more than a tribal chieftain, with Gal Maraz. The Skull Splitter, one of the most potent artifacts in the Dwarf King's vast, near endless armory of magical items, armor, and artifacts, hailing all the way back to the glory days of his race. It was an unprecedented gesture. Never before, at the very least not since their sundering of relations with the High Elves, had the Dwarves built such strong bonds with another race. And Dwarf and Man would continue to fight ferociously, side to side, shoulder to waist at least, against hordes of greenskins that dominated the lands at the time culminating finally with the Battle of Blackfire Pass, cementing the Empire's position in the world and securing the Dwarves' borders as well. Sigmar also took the opportunity to declare the official formation of the Empire, and King Kurgan Ironbeard then presented him with a gift. Twelve rune swords to be granted to the twelve tribal leaders under Sigmar's command. Of course, he didn't have them on hand right then. Dwarves are not particularly fond of swords, of course, preferring hammers and axes to the dainty instruments of the human species. But he would put his finest runesmith to the work. Alaric the Mad, a brilliant runesmith of near unrivaled skill and ingenuity, even in comparison to the runesmith of the ancient heyday of the dwarves. It would take him a full 100 years to complete the construction of all 12 rune fangs whose ingredients included not only the best Grumreel steel the dwarves could muster, but also the encapsulated wrath of entire storms of magic. The near unimaginable energies all bound and tied irreversibly into the molten metal of the blades and then hammered into shape and final form with the application of a rune near the hilt. 
all the other dwarven runesmiths hailed this as the greatest achievement in their recent history, and Alaric as the finest genius they had damn near ever produced. Alaric himself, however, continued to stubbornly insist that no, this was not yet the height of his artifice, and he would, fair enough, continue on to create an even more significant artifact later on, but the creation of the Rune of Ages might have to be a subject for yet another day, as that tale includes a considerable measure of warpstone and an orc warlord. Returning then to Alaric the Mad, after having just finished his rune fangs, he travelled to the Empire to hand them over to Sigmar. Unfortunately, Sigmar had already departed for his final journey, leaving the Empire in a state of opulence and prosperity. His work done, he had handed it over to his successors who were now wondering exactly what to do. Sigmar had been the only one to unite the various warring tribes into a single unified entity. The various tribal leaders and chiefs had always competed, often ferociously and frequently violently, with one another for power and influence. It was Sigmar's force of personality that had forged them together, and now without an emperor, their young nation looked like it was on the verge of falling apart. And so, a compromise was made. They decided to heed the words of Sigmar, who had declared that no man could or should rule the entirety of the Empire, but the institution of the Emperor was paramount to its continued existence. And so the elect accounts would instead get together and name one of their number to fulfill the role of Emperor, but upon his passing they would not grant the power of Emperor on to the previous Emperor's successors or children. Instead the Counts would gather and elect the next Emperor, and so on and so on. It was thus that when Alaric arrived, it was not at the court of Sigmar Heldenhammer, but instead at the court of Hedric I, his direct successor. He received the rune fangs with great gratitude, I have no doubt, and began handing them out to the elect counts of the provinces of the Empire. Avaland received Mother's Ruin. Hockland, Goblin Bane, Midland of course kept Pendragon's Legbiter, Nordland received Crowfeeder, Ostland got Brain Wounder, Ostermark received Troll Cleaver, Reichland claimed Dragon Tooth, Stirland took Orc Hewer, Talabakland got Stonebreaker, Bloodbringer then went to Wiesenland, the Drakwalds got fittingly enough, Beast Slayer, and finally Soland was awarded Grudge Settler. And the weapons were put to good use, as the Empire's next thousand odd years were most certainly not a particularly peaceful period. Sigmar may have driven most of the Greenskins from the lands of the Empire, but they are a hardy breed, the Orcs and Goblins. Repeated invasions would continue on and off, occasionally making it through the world's edge, mountains and into the Empire in major incursions. Dwarfen men would fight repeated wars against these monstrous things. Then there was the threat to the north of Chaos, the threat internally of the same unfortunate force. Not to mention various roaming bands of beastmen, orcs and goblins as well living in the vast forests of the Empire, and the massive monstrous creatures that all too often preyed on small settlements. 
The elect accounts were kept plenty busy by external as well as internal threats. But they managed to continue an unbroken line of emperors for 1,152 years, a new being elected every time one passed away. This proud tradition, however, was brought to a screeching and dramatic halt with the death of the hero of the empire, Mandred Skavenslayer. Now, many proper historians have of course noted that his name, Skavenslayer, is clearly some form of affected honour, since obviously the Skaven are creatures of myth and legends. Oh yes, all leading scholars have conclusively come to the conclusion, the unquestionable conclusive conclusion of absolute certainty that no such thing as a rat men exists in the sewers. But nevertheless, Mandred had won a great war against an unknown foe, often described as suspiciously furred. They were probably some manner of beastmen in all due likelihood. And these furred fiends had apparently also managed to assassinate the hero emperor. And after his passing, the elect accounts simply could not agree on a successor. Mandred had undoubtedly been a mighty battlefield leader, waging war against armies of fantasy creatures. There are no such thing as Ratman in Stews. But he had failed as a political leader. Having taken over from the unbelievably inept Boris Goldgatherer, it should have been an easy task to forge the various disparate elect accounts into a unified entity once more. Though, to be fair, he was kinda killed before he really had a good opportunity. Nevertheless, this led to the so-called Age of Wars. A several hundred long year period where the empire was riven between various emperors, all elected by their own small groups of elect counts, that competed and warred against one another ferociously. The rune fangs themselves became bargaining chips and tools of power in this conflict, as they were seen as the proper badges of office. Even if an emperor did not have all of the elect accounts on his side, if only he could acquire enough rune fangs, then theoretically, technically, he would possess all the votes that he required. The electoral deadlock was eventually broken with the election of Wilhelm of Stirland to the position of emperor. One out of two emperors now, mind you. Oh, the electoral deadlock had indeed theoretically been broken, but Elector Countess Ottilia of Talibekland was of a very different opinion. And so the age of wars transitioned in to the time of two emperors. It would not be the last time that the empire would tear itself apart, but that is not the fault of the swords, now is it, as they continued to serve ably in the hands of various lords and ladies of the years. But one of the swords would fall prey to the lengthy period of civil strife. There were 12 rune fangs, but there are currently only 10 provinces. The first to fall was the province of Drakwald. Its last elector count, Vilne, was killed around the year 1110 by yet another oddly fluffy creature. His rune fang was sent to the then Emperor Boris Goldgatherer, the tremendously incompetent, who never actually got around to appointing a new elector count. And as we've already briefly discussed, his successor was frighteningly busy dealing with the fancifully imaginative Skaven menace. Ooh. 
two-legged rats in the sewers. Clearly, this was a period of widespread drug abuse in the Empire as well. It's enough to make a man of education, of academia, and widespread learning as myself speculate whether or not Mandred Skavenslayer truly died from poison, that he was actually assassinated. Is it not indeed possible that he was simply a massive junkie and had one overdose too many? I believe, Squick, that this is not only possible, but in fact entirely likely, Squick. <clears throat> Anywho, since there was no elect account of Drakwald, they didn't need a sword, obviously. And many of the nearby provinces were quick to make arguments that, oh, lots of free clay to claim. And suddenly, Drakwald simply just disappeared from all commonly accepted maps. Drakwald's Runefang Beast Slayer was then interned within the Empire's armory, to be brought out on special occasions and given into the hands of chosen champions. And Beast Slayer was not the only Runefang to go missing. Uh, to be fair, holding on to 12 items for 2,400 years is going to be damnably difficult. I keep misplacing my keys all the time, and I imagine a tremendously powerful magical artifact can't be all that different, right? The second one to go missing, along incidentally again with the entire province, was Grudge Settler, the Runefang of Solon. Its last wielder died a far more glorious death than Beast Slayers. Elector Count Eldred of Solon fell whilst fighting against the Warg Gorbad at the hands of Gorbad Ironclaw himself. The enormous orc leading a huge Warg into Solon overran the province in 1707 in the Imperial Calendar and claimed the Runefang as a trophy from the Elector Count's broken body. Then swiftly threw it over his shoulder and forgot all about it in all due likelihood. Orcs being orcs, of course. Thusly, with the province trampled beneath the iron-shod boots of orcs, and with the capital town of Pfeildorf, oddly prophetic name, equally crushed, the province essentially ceased to exist as an administrative unit. Seeing an opportunity, its neighbour, Wiesenland, moved in to help and rebuild the stricken province. By taking it over and renaming it Wiesenland, too. <laughs> hey, it's free real estate. And Wiesenland is smart enough to claim it. <laughs> there are those that still refuse to accept the annexation and stubbornly refer to themselves as Sudenlanders to this day, but I presume the Wiesenland authorities know how to deal with such seditious behaviour. But brutal oppression of ethnic minorities aside, the story does have at least a slightly happy ending, as the Solund Rune Fang Grudge Settler was eventually recovered by a combined expedition of men and dwarves, and today it too rests in the primary armories in Altdorf. Though, unlike Beast Slayer, Grudge Settler is not expected to simply sit there and gather dust in the Imperial armories. Instead, the sword has been granted, lent theoretically, to the Reichsmarschall Kurt Helborg, who continues to wield its razor-sharp edges in the defence of the Empire and the protection of its people. Now, I will ask you to wield an equally powerful weapon in the protection of me and the not at all existing creatures in the sewers. If you enjoyed this video, then please do consider leaving a like and a comment, an offering to the algorithm gods in the comment section down below, as it is what YouTube loves.